uh, it's 2023, so this year is the 20th year since I first started the concept using foam on the fly hook to try and fool these fish using a willow grub fly that actually worked. So that's a little fly there that took me so long to design. Out of the hundreds of designs I've got, that took the longest. It's amazing. I just smile. Every time I look at it, I smile. So that's the willow grub. It's choose floating willow grub. It's a little foam fly. It's also known as the banana fly because it looks like a little banana. And that came from Derek's book, The Trout Diaries. He decided it looks more like a banana, so we changed the name. It is the most simple fly I've ever designed. And you would think it was so simple, but it just was so much work. Hundreds and hundreds of hours, I don't know. And so many different designs. It's a fantastic way to try and catch the fish. It usually involves very fine tippet, very small fly, accurate casting, and there's a and it's challenging. And people love it. So people are coming with really small reels, small rods, and uh, we're just going willow grubbing. And before I gave up guiding, I had clients just coming just for that. And we call it grubbing. So they want to go willow grubbing. And it happens usually just at the end of spring into summer. And it's happening for months and months. It used to be just a little small window of, op window of opportunity. But nowadays it's going on and on. So how did it start? Well, I'd moved to New Zealand, been in New Zealand X amount of years. And I was fishing around, trying to learn the waterways. And I kept going down to the Matara River. There was some fish I couldn't catch. And I was like, what are they feeding on? So I, I hunted out the best guide around at the time. I'm um, not too sure if he's alive now. Len Prentice, a bit of a legend in the area. Been guiding there for years. And I asked him. And he says, they're feeding on these willow grubs, but you can't catch them. He says, we just give up with it. Give up with it. You can't catch them. Once you get focused on those willow grubs, you just can't catch them. Forget it, Stu. Forget it, Stu. Well, I'm a fly designer. And I was like, wow, man, this is cool, man. This is something new. So it was like a, a red flag to bull. So that made it my mission to try and figure out how to catch these fish using a fly to imitate that food source. Bear in mind at the time, it was only like a month a month and a half window where you, where they were feeding on willow grubs. Now it's four months at least. But eventually I settled on using a small hook and a round tube of foam and the round ends of the foam came out the, 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 the eye of the hook and hung over the back end of the hook along the shank and along the shank I wrapped the foam. So it was a, a foam like a, a hot dog like a hot dog on top of a hook uh, and Dennis Black uh, was around at the time from Umqua so I used that for a number of years and then I sent it away he produced it so that was the first foam willow grub that was out there in the market and it was working it was working fine every now and again it wasn't perfect something about it just was not perfect for me I just needed to make it better so then I started doing more research. I ended up moving to a place called Athol where my little fly shop was. It's only online now, but I moved there. I ended up buying a bunch of goldfish, for example, one time. I bought a bunch of goldfish, five goldfish, they were all named. I bought a big tank and I started getting branches and <laughs> hauling them into the house, breaking open on the leaves, that's where the willow grubs live, and the little gulls and the leaves. It's like little blisters on the willow on the willow tree leaves, on the leaves of the willow tree. Breaking them out, and I was dropping the little grubs into the water. Bloop, bloop. And he was watching these goldfish, eating them and stuff. So I was getting more, more ideas, more ideas. And then one day I was looking underneath, and I could see, I, I could see underneath. I'd left the light on, I was watching the fish come up, and I realised... The little willow grub on the surface was as if it was floral. It was glowing. I, I tried so many different. I've got a box back home in New Zealand of all these different variations and blah, blah, blah of, of designs. 
tons of them. I've tried so much, all these different materials, but foam was by far the best. And I had to be simple and I had to sit on the surface. And I realized when they fall, they've got a little kink in them and they wriggle. So I tried to make a double jointed one. And, and at that size and minute, I just couldn't do it. So I realized it was all about presentation, getting the fly to land right in front of the fish. The fish is there. You want the fly to land right in front of it and to get a reaction. But I also wanted the fly to have a little kink in it because when they fall, they sort of wriggle and they got a little kink. And I realized if I had the kink in it, it, it would work better. So I had that like... I, cut strips of foam and I was trying different ways. I had the hook sitting as we normally do in a dry fly facing down. But in the end, I, I realized if I could use the hook and I could get the right type of hook and I could use the foam, I could get it to sit in the surface film flat, which is very unusual. So that's why I've designed that fly flat because there's not, it's so sparse, the hook can pull it down. So I want it to lie flat. So I've got a special hook, really um, strong hook, and I want it to lie flat on the surface. So that is the reason when I tie the willow grub, like this. Whoop, whoop. Got that little willow grub there. When I tie it, I pull it tight like that and I hold it flat so that it lands. Doom flat flat and it's a nice gentle presentation cast and that and the reason there's thread on the hook because i didn't need to do that the reason there's thread on the hook as well is i want to put some floating on it and i put a little bit of floating over the foam and on the thread of the hook that also helps it sit in the surface film flat and it doesn't affect the hookup rate. If anything, it could be better than if it was sitting vertical. So I started using size like 16 hooks, even bigger. And I started catching the fish with them. And then, you know, I kept it a bit of a secret and me and my clients were catching heaps of fish and everyone else was pretty much struggling when fish were eating, the, eating willow grubs. They started becoming so obsessed with them it was very hard to catch them in anything else. So it was great fun. But what we were using quite often was two flies and a short length of tippet between them. And this was just basically so that my clients could see the willow grub in the surface. And so could I see it in, um, when guiding. But most of the time you can get quite close to the fish. And so you don't need this fish, uh, this fly. But when I had the shop, I was showing people what I was using and I started to sell the banana fly, the Stu's willow grub, floating willow grub. I started to sell it and I was showing people what to do and everyone started catching fish and it was, uh, it was great fun to see all these happy fishermen. But then I gradually noticed after a few years, if we used this method, the fish had seen it all and they were just shying away from it. It was quite amazing. So nowadays, I just use a single willow grub. And when the fish, at the start of the season, you can usually get them in a size 16. And the reason I've got it in three different sizes is usually yellow or chartreuse. So I've got it in three different sizes because the spookier the fish become, the smaller the willow grub you want. And willow grubs are very small in some cases. So that's the reason I've got three sizes, 16s, 18s, and 20s. And you'll know if you get not an imitation, you've got the original one because it comes with a little orange sticker. And that means it's on a really strong hook. So it's a very fine wire hook and it's very strong. And you'll see the Stu Superior Flies orange sticker. That's when you know you're buying the original, a good product. And so that's a little bit of the story. It gets bigger, it's been on film, it's been in books, um, artists of them, um, Painting pictures of it. I'm proud of it. It's my most, it's my one of my proudest achievements. It's revolutionised the fishing in, uh, in New Zealand and the South Island. The smallest, most minute thing I've ever designed. And it took the longest. So always buy the original. Thanks for the support. I love you all. Go the banana. And I nearly forgot. 
we have we have a certificate. So if you catch a fish with one of these flies, you get a certificate. It's called the Grub Club. And the gentleman that helped me start that, Jerry, died. He used to come here just to go willow grubbing. Bless him. Uh, he was a legend. And he, he encouraged me to start the Grub Club. So a bit of fun as well with this fly. And anyone that catches one, you catch, catch a fish with this fly, you stick it in your heart. And it's just an achievement. I'm here in Tasmania and I just met somebody and they had one of these in their heart. They're a Grub, a grub Club member. And they're so proud of it. Uh, and it's just fun. You know, fishing's fun. But that's the design. And that's a bit of the story. But it's uh, celebrating 20 years since its first concept this year.